All right, welcome back. Tuesday, Romeo and Juliet, to be or not to be, to Shakespeare or not to Shakespeare, to nap or not to nap, to play video games or not to play video games. That is the question. Now, we left off yesterday where Peter enters. Remember? Peter enters. The Juliet lady. Con okay, so you remember. Good, because I wasn't sure if you remembered. Now, Peter comes in. Who's this Peter guy? Peter comes in and he says, Madam, the guests are come, supper served up. You called my young lady, asked for the nurse, cursed in the pantry and everything in extremities. I must hence wait. I beseech you to follow me straight. And Lady Capulet goes, we follow the Juliet. The county stays. Nurse, go girl, seek happy nights to happy days. And that is where we come into Act 1, Scene 4. So we are entering the party. We enter Romeo, Mercutio, Benvolio, with five or six other maskers. And here's the beauty of this thing. This is a, this is a masquerade party. So everyone's wearing masks. So if you were asking yourself, Mr. Reef, how does Romeo get into a party, crash a party, and nobody knows because he's a Montague. How are they not? How are they? They're gonna know. They're gonna know. They're not gonna know because he has a mask on, and just like you know Green Lantern, where he has that mask on, nobody knows who he is. Clark Kent, glasses, takes him off. Nobody knows he's Superman. Romeo, mask. Nobody knows he's Romeo. All right. So Romeo comes and into the, enters the scene. What shall this speech be spoke for our excuse, or shall we go on without apology? The date is out of such proximity. Proximity will have no Cupid hoodwinked with a scarf, bearing a Tartar's painted bow of laugh, ska scaring the ladies like a crow keeper. Nor no without but prologue faint spoke after the prompt entrance as we go now listen there's a lot of basically things. so what he's saying what is our excuse for being here he's like listen romeo's like what are why are we here what's our excuse for being here we're gonna get in trouble not a good thing and it's um and he says listen it's out of fashion to give like a, this big long winded speech and he says we're just we're not going to introduce our dancer you know our dance by having someone dress up as cupid blindfolded we're going to recite and memorize a speech to introduce ourselves. We're just going to go in. We're going to wing it. Basically, we got this. Romeo says, give me a torch. I am not for this ambling. Being but heavy, I bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not, not I, believe me. You have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead. I'm so depressed. So stake stakes me to the ground. I, I cannot move. Mercutio comes in. You, Romeo, you, you are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. You got this, buddy. Romeo, I am too sore and pierced with his shaft to soar with his light feathers and so bound, I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. Under lover's heavy burden, do I sink? I'm back. Okay. So, Mercutio jumps in and says, and to sink in it, should you burden love to great oppresses for a tender thing? You know, he's like, he's he's asking, you know, you're going to drag us all down. Love drags you down. It's not right to drag something down with it. Like, don't, you know, don't, don't damper our party here. We're having fun. You're, you're, you're making me miserable, buddy. Romeo says, is love a tender thing? Is it too rough, too rude, too boisterous? And it pricks like a thorn. Mercutio says, if love be rough with you, well, then you be rough with love. Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down. Give me a case to put my visage in, a visor for a visor. What care I? What curious eye doth caught deformities? Here are the beetle brows shall blush for me. Basically, there's women here. You'll get over it. And 
go dance with some girl, and then you'll fall in love all over again. It's the way life works. Benvolio says, Come knock and enter, and no sooner in, but every man betake him to his legs. Romeo, a torch for me, let wanton's light of heart tickle the senseless rushes with their heels, for I am proverbed with a grandeur of phrase. I'll be a candle holder and look on. The game was ne'er so fair, and I am done. Mercutio. Tut, done's the mouse, the constable's own words. If thou art done, we'll draw thee from thy mire, or save your reverence, love wherein you stick it up to the ears. Come, we burn daylight hull. Romeo just says, nay, that's not so. And Mercutio goes, I mean, sir, in delay... We waste our lights in vain like lights by day. Take our good meaning, for our judgment sits five times in the air once fine writs. He's basically just like saying, listen, we're trying to help you, buddy. We're trying to drag you out of this depression thing that you got going on, and we're trying to help you. Okay, maybe you meet somebody new. There's lots of people at this party. Maybe you'll find somebody. So Romeo goes in and um, says... And we mean well in going to this mask, but tis no wit to go. Mercutio, why may one ask? Romeo says, I dreamt a dream tonight. Mercutio goes, and so did I. Romeo goes, well, what was yours? Mercutio says, uh, that dreamers often lie. Romeo goes, in bed asleep while they do dream things true. Mercutio goes, Oh, then I see Queen Mab, we're back to mythology again, hath been with you. Benvolio says, Queen Mab, what's she? She is the fairies, the midwife, and she comes in shapes no bigger than and a gate stone and goes on about this whole thing. I, I don't want to lose you over a video because you're going to be like, Mr. Reef, enough with this whole Queen Mab thing. Extra credit point, look up who Queen Mab is and send it to me in an email. And you'll get five extra credit points on this. All right, continuing. Romeo um, is basically like going to the mas masquerading ball. And um, he's like kind of backing out. He's trying to find a reason. He's going through this whole thing. Um, and there's this long-winded speech about who Queen Mab is. He goes on. They go on and on. We're going to go all the way down to where Romeo says, Peace, peace, Mercutio, peace. Thou talk of nothing. Mercutio says, true, I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy. So, like, Romeo's like, listen, I'm tired of hearing this story about Queen Nabby. Like, you're, you're killing me, Smalls. And he goes, true, I'm talking about, like, dreams, but dreams are nothing but imagination, you know, as thin as air. And he says, which is a thin substance of the air, more inconsistent than the wind who woos, even now the frozen boss, uh, bosom of the north and being angered puffs away at thence, turning his face due, dropping south. Basically, you know, the wind is predictable, blows from the north. Everything is predictable. Um, there's a certain sense of, of um, predictability that you can count on in life. Benvolio says, this wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done and we shall come too late. Like, listen... Enough of this banter. We got to get to the party. Romeo says, I fear too early for my for my mid, my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's reveal uh, revels and expires the term of despised life closed in the breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that hath of the steerage of my course direct my sail, O lusty gentleman, and Benvolio's like, strike the drum. And basically, Romeo's going like, listen, I'm really worried. I got a bad feeling. I feel like something's in the stars that's not kind of working out. I don't know if this is a good idea. But he's like, listen, we're, we're governed by fate. Whatever happens is going to happen. And he's like, listen, onward, let's go. And uh, Benvolio's like, yeah, beat the drum, let, you know, to the drum, beat, let's go onward let's be gone so now we have the party set up for tomorrow wednesday be there be square 
and here we go.